Uh, zebrafish arrived, of course, when I did as well, so I did a lot of work with them. And we had this, you know, we called it an aquarium. It was a very small box with water in it. And it had a, it had a, a light source above it, and they would kind of mostly swim in, in attitude with this light source from above, kind of like, you know, I guess uh, their instincts are that. They would swim relative to that. So I would take a flashlight and I would shine it in the side of the, aquar of the aquarium because it was glass and then make them turn and swim with relative to my light like this. It was kind of fun. <laughs> and, and the studies on the zebrafish were? A lot of osteoporosis type of uh, things affects the atrophy of muscles just like humans have. Uh, aquatic life has it as well without the force of gravity. and. And uh, so it's the, those type of studies, and that, that was primarily a Japanese study. I have not seen the results from those personally, um, and I'm not even sure, you know, it takes long processes as they analyze the data to actually get those final results on things, and they're, they're working on that now. Okay, people with a home aquarium know that they can sprinkle the food at top, <laughs> but you have to open the lid. How do you feed fish in space? Yeah, that's, that's a good question. I, that's nutrients in the water itself. It's pretty amazing uh, the way that we've come up and done these things. So yeah. Did they? Yeah, you don't you don't feed them. You don't. There's no sprinkling in space. <laughs> How did they swim? Uh, you know, it's like I said, it's not a large volume, but they'd swim and they sometimes they just do unusual attitudes, which I, I fish typically don't do those type of. They kind of use a vertical earth, you know, gravitational force, you know, reference when fish swim. Most most do. Uh, but these didn't have to, and occasionally they just get off on some high attitudes, I guess you would call it, unusual attitudes. Uh, but it was neat to, neat to watch them.